Tonight, I have the great privilege to say over some holy words from Rav Shlomo Brevda, my Rebbe. He was my teacher for 18 years. And uh, I want to tell you how I met Rav Shlomo Brevda. My wife and I had many, many tzaros our first year of marriage. For example, my father-in-law passed away three days before our wedding, four days. Yeah, And the halach is that if a woman or a man is an avel, a mourner, you're not allowed to get married. You're not allowed to get married. So it looked like we had to cancel the wedding. Can you imagine that? Chassan and Kala, all ready to get married, ready after Tisha B'av, cancel the wedding. So what do we do? We went to Rav um, Shlomo Zam and Orbach, and he said very casually, just don't tell your wife, her father died. My father was living in a different country. So that's it, we didn't tell him. And then from that, uh, after the um, Shavu Baruch, someone told her and she said Shiva. And then we went to Brazil and it was almost choked to death by bandits. And one thing after another, I had meningitis and pneumonia and a fire and this. And then my daughter was born, she was hospitalized many times. And finally, I was run over a car and pronounced dead mm-hmm. in the Yerushalayim. Many, many tzaras, many, many more. I'm not even going to go into all of them. We had many tzaras, and um, it really caused me to think, what's going on here? You know? They say in Yiddish, there's an expression, what's going on here? So I went to many rabbis, and then finally I went to ask them advice, and each one said very nice things. But finally I wound up by Rav Shlomo Brevda, and I spoke to him a number of times, Rav Shlomo Brevda. And I spoke to him a number of times, and he said to me like this. He said, come back tomorrow, and I'll have the answer to all your problems. Well, you can imagine, after almost being killed twice in one year, choked to death by bandits, they choked me for two minutes. They took my head, they stuck it in the sand, and then they were choking me for two minutes. And then I was, I was crossing the streets, and a car was in the wrong lane. He was trying to overtake a bus. He went like this. He hit me. He threw him in the air and landed on my head. And there was a watermelon truck coming the other direction. The tires were on my body. I was almost, they pronounced me dead on the spot. And I had meningitis and pneumonia and a fire. And Erev Sukkah, somebody came and ripped down our Sukkah. So many tzaras. And he's telling me, he said, come back tomorrow have the answer to all your problems. Sounds pretty good, no? So you can imagine, he came back the next day. I'm like wondering What is the rabbi going to tell me? He says to me like this. He says, the answer to your problems is tefillah. He said, I'm going to write you a special tefillah, and I promise you things will get better. And I have right here, I gave to Rabbi... Jirai. Rabbi Jirai. Jirai? Jirai. Jirai. I gave it to him. Um, I don't have more of these cards, really, but I can tell you at least. You can have a copy. What? You can make, make, a make a copy. You get a Xerox machine. Make a copy. Copy. Yeah. So you can make it really big. It's this this part of the thing. Um, and this tefillah that Reb Revda wrote, and I I found it afterwards, he gave it to a number of his Talmidim, the ones who were very close to him. And it's based on the Gra, the Vilna Gra and Mishlei. The Vilna Gra and Mishlei says something very enlightening. He says, you know, we pray, and we think, look, I'm a good guy, look. I live in Jamaica States. I come to the house of Torah. I pray with great devotion. I give staka. I'm nice to my wife generally, you know, as long as she doesn't bring the food or yell at me, you know, or make me take out the garbage, you know. So I'm a good guy. I deserve the best, you know. And then we pray to God and say, listen, you should save me. I'm a nice guy. Anybody feel like that? Sometimes we feel like that, right? The Vilna Gaon says, or brother said, that's a big mistake. Because if we ask that our prayers should be answered because of our merit, we're finished. You know why? Because as many merits, let's say we have today 100 merits. You know, we said some brachot with kavana, and we were nice to our wives, and, um, and we learned Torah, and we prayed with some kavana. But as many merits as we have, we have like 50,000. You know, let's say we made one brach in Shemana Esri Kavana, but there was another 50 that we, didn't, we were thinking about something else or a business deal or, you know, about this or what we're going to have for lunch today. It's very hard. It's very hard to pray with Kavana. So you should never, says the Vilna Gon, you should never ask Hashem to save you because of your merit. Because 
We don't have enough merit. It's not a good. It's not. It's not a good request. Um, you know what it's like. It's like um, you know you you go to the bank and like you foreclosed on twenty five loans and you say, "Can you lend me some money?" It's like you know, you know, sir, you haven't paid back twenty five times. You think we're gonna lend you money? You have a bad rating. So we have a bad rating, you know, because that's what happens. But the good news is, says the Vildagon, there is a way to pray that you for sure be answered. For sure. And that's what Rebbe Rebbe was saying. Promise me. And the Vildagon says that if you ask for mercy, that is a very deep idea that the Gora is saying, right? Because we think, we live in America, you know, and um, we think the more, like, the more power you have and the more money you have and the more influence you have, the more you're going to succeed. In Judaism, it doesn't work that way, right? In Judaism, it's the opposite. The more humble you are, the more successful you'll be. And if you turn to Hashem and say, Hashem, I don't have any merits. I'm only turning to you because you're infinitely mercy. That is the best tefillah. Exactly the opposite of you would think. You think you come to God and say, I have so many merits, save me. That's great. No, that destroys you. The best thing to do is to come to Hashem and say, I have no merit at all. I only want your mercy. And that's a Rebrevda, is the best type of tefillah. And that's what he says here. I'm going to read to you what he wrote in English. I'll read to you first in Hebrew, and I'll say in English. You can look here on this card. Even though I'm not worthy, first you have to ask for something. Like, Hashem, please stop sending me so many, sir, I'm enough ready, right? So you ask for that. And you say, even though I'm not worthy, I appreciate any kedai levagish kodashayim, to ask for those things. Mikomokom, nevertheless, now tashibeni reikom ofenecha. Don't turn me back empty-handed. Ki b'leiv nishbar, with a broken heart, hinei nemitzchan ofenecha. I pray before you. Ba'al gadol tuvacha, and your great goodness, v'rachamecha atzumim, and your incredible mercy, I rely and I rest. My heart should rejoice in your salvation. And this is the special tefillah. And when he was writing the tefillah, he was like this, and he was thinking, you know, every word, he was like bringing it down from the heavens, you know? It was like a pipe to the heavens, bringing down the words. And the tefillah was like three times as long. But he, is this, uh, this is tea? This is tea. Oh, thank you. Very nice, thank you. Okay, so that's the thing. So this is a very, very big um, idea about tefillah. That we should never pray based on our merits, but always turn to Hashem's infinite mercy. And if we do that, that's very special. In the Sifrei Kabbalah, it talks a lot about this, about mercy, asking Hashem for mercy, because... Hashem is infinitely mer- merciful. We say in Birkat I don't know if this as far as you say, but we, Ashkenaz, we say, who hate him, who made him, we hate him. They also say that. Mm-hmm. Who hate him, hate him. He's just all the time doing good for us. Call Nishima, but Nishima, Every breath a person takes, he's meant to thank Hashem, right? Because, you know, there's some people that can't even breathe. They, like, it's very hard for them to breathe. Every breath we have to thank Hashem. And that's why when we get up every day to pray the Shemona Esrei, we should remember, look, you know, we ask Hashem for understanding. There are people who don't understand. Somebody just brought me here with a car. He told me his nephew was very sick for a year. He can't talk. He can't think. He's matushtash. He's very confused. It's a big kindness that we could think straight. And Rofei Kolei Amo Yisrael. Hashem cures people. People get sick and they get cured. I had meningitis that could be deathly, fatal. And Hashem cured me. And pneumonia, and this, and this, and this. People break bones. Hashem is constantly curing us. Barech Aleinu. Hashem gives us parnasa. Every single day. He gives us what we need. We turn to Him and we ask Him for what we need. Hashem is constantly giving and giving and giving and giving to us. And our job is to recognize that He's giving. Right? And that's why we, we pray every day. So many times, three times a day we pray Hashem give us um, Parnasa. Or Yitzhak Solomon's brother. You are? What's your first name? Moshe. Moshe. Yitzhak, his brother, learns in my kolel. He's the next Avad Yosef. I'm telling you now. I'm predicting that. 
that your brother will be the next Ravad Yosef. He continues in his speed. It's amazing. Okay. Anyway, he'll come back here one day and he'll be uh, involved with the uh, House of Torah if he listens to me. In any event, this is what we're saying here today. This is a very, very big principle. And you have to really, it sounds very simple, but it's a very, very deep idea. Because we pray the Shema Esrei three times a day. There's 19 brachot. That's every single day we say 57 bread blessings. Yeah, 57. Just in the Shemon Esrei, we say 100 brachot every day. Yeah, but just the Shemon Esrei, all the brachot we're saying is to recognize that Hashem is the source of everything. Nothing comes from us. Everything comes from, from Hashem. Right? All our success in the world comes from Hashem. And this is actually brought out and highlighted. This I heard, everything I'm telling you I heard from Shalom Brevda. In this week's Parsha, in this week's Parsha, we have a very interesting story about Shiduchim. My wife is a Shadchan, you know. But to make a Shiduch is very hard. The boy and the girl, and they have to like each other. And then the money, you have to deal with the money. You know, and the parents, you know, one of the, you know, they, someone told me a joke. They said, what's the difference between in-laws and outlaws? You know what the answer is? What else? You know? It says, out, outlaws are wanted. Right? <laughs> outlaws, in-laws. Who wants in-laws? Right? So, that was a joke. But the point is, is that it's not easy to make a shidduch. And what happens in this week's Pasha? It's a very interesting story here. Yeah? Eliezer comes to the town where Rivka and Lava and Besua live, and he says, you know what? I'm looking for a special girl. Whoever takes water and feeds me and my slaves and my camels, she's the right girl. So like, first of all, like that's a very strange request. Does anyone know how old Rivka was in this week's Pasha? Three years old. Three years old. You can ask a three-year-old girl. These were strong guys. She had 10 strong slaves. You can ask a three-year-old girl to feed all of, give water. Like, that's crazy. Okay, Rashi says the water came up to meet her. It's true. But that's like really, really crazy. That's number one. Number two is, like, what's going on with Eliezer? He makes this whole thing. Whoever comes and gives water and this, you know, just go in and see, like, who's the best girl in town? And find and bring her back for Yitzchak. Says the Vilna Gon that he was afraid. Eliezer was afraid that if he did too much he put in too much of an effort in this, he would think it's because of me. Because mm-hmm. I'm such a great shatchan, you know. I'm the best shatchan around. You know, and I do this, and I do this. So Eliezer put it totally in Hashem's hands. He didn't want to have even an iota of interaction. He said, Hashem, you, I'm asking you, send this sign, and that will be the girl. For Yitzhak, right? And that's exactly what happened. After he finished, does anyone know what Eliezer did when he finished? Do you know what happened? He bowed down to Hashem. He was mishtachaveh, because that's a sign of complete humility to Hashem, that Hashem takes care of all our needs. And I see now you're learning the siman of Mem Vav. It's a very, very important siman. And we have a sidor here? Yes. Yeah. There's a sidor? Yes. The sidor of Birkat HaShachar. The sidor of Birkat HaShachar. The sidor of Birkat HaShachar, right? We say Birkas Hashachar in the morning. You know, we say, Pokeach Ivrim, who makes us the blind see. So, Kate Pufim, who helps us stand up. Right? Rakar, Salamayim. Right? All these things. The fact that we could get up in the morning, the fact that we could see, the fact that we could hear, the Tarnagal, all of these things. Every single day, we get up from our beds and we thank Hashem for all of the gifts. He's given us. And Hashem gives us the gifts every day. You know? We can wake up in the morning. I'll tell you some Kabbalah. Do you want to hear Kabbalah? Do you want to hear interesting Kabbalah? It's Kabbalah, but it's one in the Shulchan Aruch. Yeah? yeah? Very, very interesting question. Can a convert make the bracha of Shlomo Sani Goy? Does anyone know? A convert. Can a convert make the bracha who, di- who created me a Jew? Does anyone know the answer? Yeah. It's well, if you say it's a machloket, that answers the Roma, all the questions. No, the Roma says no, but the Russian group is that he's allowed to. He's allowed to, right? Do you know why he's allowed to? Because I think he said he has a choice to choose to become a Jew. Ah, okay, that could be. Maybe someone says that. 
But the Mangan of Ram said something else, which will knock your socks off. Does everyone know what that means? Then? Anybody wearing socks here? Okay. It means like this, yeah? He says like this. You ever heard of Michael Jackson? Michael Jackson? Michael like, Jackson, yeah, okay. Is he still alive? He's still around? No, he overdosed or something. Right? Anyway, but the point is, is that you could wake up in the morning and be Michael Jackson. This is what the Magad of Ram says. He says, because there's something called Ibor um, Nishama. Ibor Nishama. I'm not, you have a Shaman Aruch yet? Yeah, can you bring it? I'm sorry. Uh, this is a seven, remember? Yeah? There's something called Ibor Nishama. This is a very, the Nishama of someone else comes into you. Yeah? And sometimes, you know, the story of the Gilgul, not the Gilgul, of the Dibuk, you know, you heard about this? Yeah. Famous story with the Chavetz Chaim. So, says the Magen of Ram, yeah, in the Brach of Shlos and Egoi. Simon Ben Vav, right? Mm-hmm. I want to read it to you, because you won't believe me. This is like, this is not Sifrei Kabbalah here. But he says like this. Mem Vav he says, he asked this question, right, how can a Nger make Shlos and Egoi? He says, "Ulufim ashkasa mekubalim, shah brachos halolu mevarchen al etzias neshama belaila." Right? Shelo nidbak ba. Right? Shelo nidbak ba nishmat akum o eved. In kain gam ger yochel varkein. When you are neshama, when you go to sleep, the neshama leaves the body, and it goes up to shemayim. You know that? If you're neshama every single night. You die. You know, when a person's sleeping, is one sixtieth of death. That's what the Gemara says. That sleep is one sixtieth of death. And your Shama goes up to the Shamayim. And when it's in Shamayim, something could be nidbak to your Neshama. Then a goy. Yeah? You could wake up and be Michael Jackson. Or who else is there? Lionel Richie. Who else is these kind of they have today? I don't even know who's around today. Whatever. President Trump. You could wake up in the morning and be Trump, you know? I think, you know. But that's what the Ma'ir Ma- Ma- is saying. So every morning, we thank Hashem that sh- sh- um, Shalom HaSani Goy, that we didn't wake up as with a neshama of a non-Jew attached to our neshama. Right? So that's the pshat in that bracha. And again, all of these brachot are recognizing that every single day we're created from new. You know? All the bracha we make, um, or every single day we're a briach alasha, we're a completely new being. Hashem creates us anew. And we thank you, Hashem. They were a totally new creation, right? And this is how a Jew is meant to live his life. To always be connected to Hashem. To always be connected to Hashem. I want to tell you a story that happened to me once. Yeah? One time. My um, wife was in the hospital. We had a lot of sorot. She had to have a certain operation. And they just weren't willing to do it. Why? Because I didn't sort out the financial part of the operation. But I was trying to. But they wouldn't answer the phone. You know? And she was on the operating table. Can you believe this? She was in Israel, in a Dasein Karen hospital. And I kept asking them, I want to sort out the financials. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. She already said, we can't do it until you sort out the money. I said, okay, so I called up the insurance company and they don't pick up the phone. It's like, what am I supposed to do? You know? So I tried again and again and again. So finally I just said, no. I kept saying, no movado. I said it once, twice, many, many times. And then just everything got sorted out. I finally, like, uh, I, I had an idea. I called up one of my students and I got them to take the phone to the company and they think, but it just fell into my head, do that, you know. They're not going to pick up the phone. They're about to cancel the operation. That's it. Hashem is constantly helping us. Hashem is constantly doing good for us. And we have to recognize it every single moment. And that's why we make so many brachot. 100 brachot every day. We go to eat a cookie, make a bracha. You make a drink, you make a bracha. You go to the bathroom. I have to tell you, you know, when I was younger, I wasn't religious. Yeah. I went to the Bronx High School of Science. You know what that is? In the Bronx? Yeah? It's a, it's a high school, special high school. You know where it is? It's a special high school in the Bronx of Science. Anyway, so I wasn't religious. And one time I had a friend who was religious. And he came to my house. And he went to the bathroom. 
And he came out and he made a bracha. I said, what? What are you doing? He said, there's a special blessing you make when you come out of the bathroom. I said, that's crazy, you know? And he explained to me, and they thought, Marabu Masech Hashem. Yeah? The Chavetz Chaim wrote, he said, if we know what would happen to a person when you go to the bathroom, we would send a telegram and say, thank you, you know, I survived this experience. I survived going to the bathroom. Because your whole body gets, you know, turned upside down. So this is the thing, we have to constantly thank Hashem that is giving us our life again. Every single day, right? And, you know, Hashem decides on Yom Kippur. Mi yechiyav and mi amos. Who's going to live and who's going to die? I remember, you know, that when I, um, when I had this experience, I was run over by a car. The day, that, that day I was thinking, I was buying food for a kiddush for my daughter. And I was thinking, I made a whole list of things I had to do. I have to do this, I have to do this, and this. And I woke up in the hospital, I couldn't even see. My head was covered with blood. So we have to realize that we have such kindness coming to us from above. And if a person wants to live his life, that he has success in everything, yeah? And this is, Rashi says that in Chumash, yeah? That Yosef Atzari is coming up in Parshat um, um, Miketz, I think. Yeah? Miketz, yeah. No, before Miketz, right? What is that? Vahesha, right? That Yosef Atzari, everything he did was successful. Everything he did. He was, he was successful in business. He was successful in, in everything. Everything he did. He was successful. Why? What does Rashi say? Does anyone know? Rashi says it. He says, because shame Hashem, Shagar with Pete. Because he was always saying Hashem's name. And this is a very big secret. It says in the Svarim that if you say Hashem's name, he comes. If you don't say Hashem's name, he doesn't come. Yeah? So let's say you're in a big Sarah. Let's say you're getting robbed. We're on the beach of Rio de Janeiro where I was and you got robbed. Yeah? What? <laughs> yeah? You get robbed. Yeah? You say Shem Hashem, he comes and helps you. That's what happened to me. You know what happened? Yeah, what's your name? With the black shirt, what's your name? Yaakov. Yaakov. I want to tell you what happened. I was being killed. I was being choked to death. And suddenly I remembered a story about the Rav Brisk. He was on a train. He was escaped from the Holocaust. And he thought about the Gemara. says, if you think, Ain od Milvado, then Hashem will save you. And that thought came into my head, and they ran away. Is it Mamish? Uh, what? Be-met? Is it what? If you really think that, you have a Gemara Chulet? You think I'm making it up? No, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Breslov is very big on that also. Yeah, but the Gemara was before Breslov. No, I know, I'm saying. But 1,700 yeah. years. For those who follow. Right. Yeah, no, look. Everything is good. But that's the thing. The thing is, is that it's a very strange Gemara. It's very strange. Yeah, I want to read it to you. It's talking here about one of the big rabbis who's being attacked by a, a witch. You know, everyone see Harry Potter? You know, right? There really are witches around, you know? Even today, there, there are people, a brother <coughs> told me once that um, he was attacked by a witch when it was black magic. And she did certain things. She tried to do certain things to him. But listen to this. The Gemara says in Chulin, Dav Zayin Amid Beis. It says like this. Why is it called Kshafim? Magic is called Kshafim. Because it shakes the heavenly throne. Right? And so Rav Hanina was attacked by a witch. Right? And what happened here? Oh, what, what page? Uh... Page 7b in Chulin. It says, Ain Milvano, Shafim. Milvano can even help you for a witch. Ahi Isa. Davi caught Mahadra Lemishkal Afri Matusi Kari. She wanted to take dirt from underneath his feet because that's the way the witches work, you know? You saw how Potter, you saw? Okay, I don't know yeah. if they know real witchcraft, but that's the way apparently the witches work. They take the dirt under your feet and that helps them to get you into trouble. Mm-hmm. So he said, take the dirt. It won't do anything to you. Ain't on Mavadoxi. It says in the Torah, Ata reis ladas by har sinai. Ata reis ladas. You saw clearly Shashem Wulokim that Hashem is God. Ain't Omobada. There is no other existence. By Har Sinai, 
who has shown to us clearly there's nothing else in the world, only Hashem, right? According to Kabbalah, Hashem had to pull away, there was what's called simsum, Hashem had to pull away from the world in order to create the world, because He exists. But even then, He still exists in the world, okay? So that's Eino Mavano. That's a very big question on this Kamara. How does it help to say Eino Mavano and that saves your life? And the answer is like this. The answer is, is because when a person thinks really deeply, Ein Oed Malvan, he really feels it, he's transported to another world. He's not in the same world. He feels like they could feel the same, but you exist in another existence. It says in the Tzvarim, there's four worlds. There's Atzilus, Bria, Yitzira, and Asiya. When a person is davening, he's in Atzilut. Mm-hmm. You're in the highest world where only Hashem exists. And that's what happens when you think Ein Oed Malvano, you go up to Atzilut, and the robbers, you know, like, they can try to get you, but they're not going to do anything. A witch, or a robber, or whatever, yeah? And many, many people have told me they've been attacked by robbers, and this ha- and it's helped them, yeah, after I gave the shear. Ain't all milvado. That's it. You know, nothing else exists. Because the more you believe that, the more it's true. It says in the Gemara, in Erevin, Hachash barosho yasik Torah. If you have a headache, learn Torah. I don't understand. You ever had a headache? Anyone ever? You ever had a headache before? Mm-hmm. What's the worst thing you can do if you have a headache? Learn Torah. Yeah, or learn anything. You know, your head hurts, right? The, the pshat in the Gemara is, because when you learn Torah properly, you go to Atzilut. So your body is not bothering you anymore. In Atzilut, your body doesn't bother you anymore. You're in a totally different world. And we say this every day in Kriyat Shema. Whoever pays attention. Anyone pay attention here during Kriyat Shema? It's kind of long, so by the time you get to the end, you might already be like, you know, spaced out like myself. But when I have attention, when I pay attention, so it says at the end of Shema, Laman Yirbu Yemechem, Yemechem, Yemechem. It's like Laman, this is going to be saying, one second. Uh, before that, okay. Laman Yirbu Yemechem, Yemechem, Allah Dimash Nishba Hashem Lo Seichem, Lo Seichem, Kimei Hashemayim Alaretz. Anybody know? Anyone say Shema? You say Shema? You all say Shema every day? Yeah? What do those words mean? This is a test. You know, there was a big rabbi. Um, I forgot who which one it was. He would give a smicha test. The first day he would ask people, the first question on the test to be a rabbi was, what does the words Yore or Malkosh mean? Does anyone know? Yore or Malkosh? Does anyone know? We say it in Kriyat Shema every day. It means the early rains and the late rains. Anyway, so... We say in Kriyat Shema every day, Ki You know what that means? It means that a person could live like heaven on earth. Ki like the days of heaven on earth. And how do you do that? You do that by thinking, Eino Mulvado, or Hashem, or Elohim. You make brachot, you pray. And when a person prays, he's connected to Hashem. And then nothing can harm him in the whole world. You know, the whole world could collapse. Of course, look, you know, there are gzevot, but it depends on how well you do it as well, you know. Um, but this is the real, this is reality. Everything else is not reality. You know, I was once in Shul, and I was collecting, I have yeshiva, I have four yeshivot, five yeshivot, I helped run in Eretz Israel. And I was talking to a guy, and it was an interesting guy, it was on St. Patrick's Day. You know what St. Patrick's Day is? Everybody wears green and they get drunk. It's like Purim for the non-Jews, you know, except they don't uh, read the Megillah. They do other things. But this guy was wearing a green tie and he told me, he said, Rabbi, you know the difference between me and you? He said, I live in reality and you don't live in reality. You know, I guess he had a green tie, right? And he made a mistake. I apologize for it. But he made a mistake. We live in reality. Whoever lives in the world of Ein Od Milvado, that's the reality. Ki Hashem Elokeichem Emes. We say at the end of Shema every day. Hashem. The more you're connected to Hashem, the more Emet you have. The more Kiyom. Emet means Kiyom. It means existence. And I'll tell you also, listen, Parnassah. Yeah? The bracha for Parnassah comes, the more that a person is connected to Hashem, the more bracha will have in Parnassah. I spoke about it in Shabbat, Moshe Shabbat, we made him love in Malka by the house of Shlomo Michal, his uh, cousin, right? Um, some people, you weren't there, right? But you missed out. I gave the secret how to guarantee your parnasah. What's the secret, Rabbi? What's the oh, secret? oh, well, you have to come next. So the secret is like this. Yeah? Build the show. The secret is good service. 
No, look, I'll tell you. I've been doing this for 25 years. And look, it's working for me. I'm telling you. The Gemara says, like, it's the Gemara Yushalmi. We don't have it. The Gemara says, that if you say the Pasha of Man, the 32 Psukim. Actually, you have my blue suitcase? You want to bring it? It's over there. Because I have a copy of my book. I write a whole book about this. Um, I just got back. My brother made a wedding. There's a blue suitcase around here somewhere. It has the book in it. My brother made a wedding, and for the benchers, he made he reprinted my book on the Parshat Aman. Because the Parshat Aman is the 32 psukim in the Torah that talk about the man. And you know, there's a big connection between man and money. You know what money means in Hebrew? Money. It means my man. Man sheli is money. Yeah? Okay, yeah, bring it over here. Right. So you put it on this thing here, then I can, uh, you're a strong guy. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, about 25 years ago, we found this Kamala, and I was so impressed that I wrote a book about it. Here it is. It's called Praying with Joy 4. There's another three. See, this is the wedding my, my niece got married last night. Anyway, so in this book, I speak about these 32 Sukim, and the Gemara says, yeah, the Gemara says, um, I guarantee this. The Gemara, Amr of Chaob and Ayor, guarantee that if you say these psukim with kavana, to be when close you, to Hashem, with, then your panas is guaranteed. Do you say this psukim as is, or you say in the Shnai Mikra? I don't say Shnai Mikra. Some so you should, but I don't. Because it takes too long. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. It takes too long. Don't do, do it. it. Don't be to people. And some people only say it on Parshat Bashalak on Tuesday. <laughs> Worthless. Yeah? I dafka don't say it. I try. Sometimes I <laughs> But no, I do, but I don't say it. That's, that's the worst thing. Because then you think, yeah, I say it once a year and I, tur- I turn to Hashem. You have to turn every day. If you say these psukim, then you'll recognize that all your parnasah comes from Hashem. And then Hashem will say your parnasah. The whole point, whoever was in Beit Gabriel for Surah Shashit, I spoke about this in Surah Shashit last Shabbat. Yeah? The whole point of parnasah is to realize that it comes from Hashem. It's a test. Yeah? You work. And you shouldn't think that it comes from your work. You know, you work and you get a good deal. You have a good business deal. You make uh, $10 million. You know, and you think, I'm such a smart businessman. <laughs> yeah. It's not true. Hashem sent you bracha. Yeah. All parnasah is birkat Hashem. Yeah. And if you say these 32 psukim every day, which I do, right after shachrit, the first thing I do as I'm taking off my tefillin, this is my breakfast. I say these 30, I have some food also, but before I eat physical food, this is the man. I eat the man. Yeah? Mm. And you know, it says in the Gumara, Eina Torah nitna ela ochle man. You could all be ochle man. The Svarim say, if you say these pusukim, then you're from the ochle man. And you'll have promised you your panasa. Now, I have to raise my kolel $30,000 a month. I don't know how to do that. I'm not a good fundraiser. You know? I'm a very bad fundraiser. But somehow every month it comes in. I don't know exactly how it works, but it does. Um, and don't think I won't ask you for money afterwards. I'm like, for sure I ask you. You know, because I have to do some ishtadlut. You know, even I say parsh a month, but you need you need to do some ishtadlut, right? So the pshat is say the now you can get this book. I think they sell it here in, in one of the stores here on Main Street. You know, um, and there's another few books about also about tefillah. But even if you don't buy the book. In my book, I just explain how every pasuk is another yisod of emunah. For example, I'll give you an example here. Um, this is a very important one, right? It says uh, that it doesn't help to do more or less ishtadlut. You have to do the exact, the right amount of ishtadlut. Now, that's a very hard question. How much, does anyone here know how much ishtadlut you're supposed to do? How much time you're supposed to learn Torah? How much time are you supposed to do Ashtabu? Anybody know the answer? Ashtabu for what? For money? For Parnassah, yeah. At the same level, you're holding it. Very good. It depends on that. But it also depends on where your needs are. You know, if your needs are, you know, $30,000 a month or $50,000 or $100,000, my teacher of Yaakov Hillel, he has to raise $3 million a month. He has 50 yeshivas, I don't know, things and seminaries, and I don't know, he's doing all these things. He needs to, he has to do a little more ishtalut than most people, yeah? Because to get, it's quite a lot of money, you know, $3 million a month. You ever try to raise $3 million? 
You ever try to raise 30,000? Hashem, 30,000, 3 million, 3,000. It's true, right? But just try it. You know? But that's the thing. You need to do Ishtadlut. And the reason, he told me once, why do you do Ishtadlut? Just say it. He says, because Hashem wants to maintain Bechira. He wants people to have free choice. If the money would just fall from the sky, Ya Lechem and Shemayim, we wouldn't have free choice anymore. We wouldn't be able to choose that Hashem who Elohim. Yeah? It has to be hard. And that's why, you know, 100 years ago, everyone believed that Parnassah comes from Hashem, uh, and Parnassah and Hashem runs the world. Today, people believe it, don't believe it. Someone wrote a book, it sold 10 million copies, called The God Myth. Who says it's a God even? Shalom, they don't. They deny the existence of Hashem, right? When you say the Psukim of Parshat Amon every single day, Every single day you reinforce in your mind that everything comes from Hashem. And that it doesn't really matter what, I mean, it does, you have to do the right Ishtadlut. Like Yaakov said, it depends your level of Amunah and also what your needs are and all your circumstances. But that's it. Every single day you have to, um, you have to, what's it called? You have to um, enforce this because we forget very, very easily. Yeah, we forget that our parnasa comes from Hashem, right? And um, yeah, here you can trust that Hashem will arrange your exact parnasa every day. Right? They were not allowed to leave the man over from one day to the next. You know that every single pasay in month. Where is it written that we have to read the parnasa every day? Is it's written, it's written in Shulchan Aruch. I'll show it to you. I'll show it to you right here in this in the Shulchan Aruch. You don't have to. It's it's good. The lashon of the shulchan is it's good to say it every day. Um, but you don't have to. If you don't want your pan, I asked Ron to read Yosef. I says it says in the Gemara that if you say parsha taman, your panas is taken care of. Is that literal or not literal? He told me it's literal. I said, why don't people do it? He says, I don't know. Maybe they don't want parnasa. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's read this. Tov lamar parsha takeda parsha taman. Yeah, okay. So it's good to say it, right? It's very good to say it. Because your pronounce is guaranteed if you say it. Of course you say it. Where's the Mishnah Bura? He talks about it. Why is it good to say it? Mishnah Bura says, Why is it good to say Pashtaman every day? So he explains. They bring it down as a halacha or something good? I mean, the Shulchan Aruch. Tov Lamar Pashtaman. You should say it. It's good to say it. Parshat Amon says the Mishnah Bruah, Muftach lo, Shelo is my Mizrah Sam. Your Pranas is taken care of. Yeah? Right? Why? Says the Mishnah Bruah, right? Parshat Amon, Shiamin, Shakol, Mizonotav, Boin, Bashkacha Pratit. All of your Pranas comes from Hashem's divine providence. Kriksiv, Hamar, Belo Yisif. More Ishtalis doesn't help. Right? Unless the shtalus doesn't hurt. Right? That's a good safe, you know? It's a very reliable safe, you know? He promises. If you say it every day, you're pronounced to take care of But look, you have to say it with kavana. And you have to really believe it. I'm going to tell you a story now about the holy Al Sheikh. You heard about the Al Sheikh? Rabbi the Al Sheikh? It's a famous story. You probably heard it already, but I'm going to say it again. Um, you heard the story? It's a famous story. The Al Sheikh once gave a drasha. He said, If you have true Amunah and Hashem, Hashem will take care of you completely. Anyway, it was a big drasha. It was, I think, maybe Shabbat at Godol. There was hundreds of people there. And there was one wagon driver there. And he said, You know what? The rabbi said, if you have bitochon in Hashem, Hashem will take care of you. Yeah? So, what did he do? He sold his wagon. He sold his wagon. Are we finished? Do we have time? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have time still? Five minutes. Nine, five, nine, five minutes. Okay. He saw, then we'll finish with that. He sold his wagon, and he just said, Tilim all day long. Yeah? Tilim all day long. Anyway, they got, let's say, um, I don't know, $1,000 to the wagon. Anyway, comes the end of the month, they're out of money. They spent all the money. He used to take people every day, like a taxi or things. There's no money left. 
and his wife is beginning to get nervous. They said, you didn't hear the rabbi's drasha? He said, if you, if you have bitachon, I shall take care of it. So he's saying, tehilim all day long, yes, just tehilim. Anyway, meanwhile, what happens? A non-Jew bought the wagon. He filled it up with gold. He was driving along the road. A tree falls down and kills him. And the horses, they know what to do, so they go back to the original owner. So he's finished, he's, he's saying tehilim, and they're out of money, and in walks the horses with all the gold. And everybody's astounded. The, tru- the promise of the al came true. So all of the big rabbis went back to the al and said, I don't understand, Ra- Rebbe, we also heard your drasha, yeah? Why don't we get a, a wagon filled with gold? He said, because you heard it, but he did it, yeah? Mm-hmm. He actually showed his mitachon Hashem. Somebody who takes the time every day, five, three to five minutes a day, however long it takes you, to say parshaman, Hashem, you did something. You made an effort. Hashem will take care of you. Yeah? If you really believe it, you have to believe it. You say, yeah, the rabbi, what does he know? Yeah, whatever. You know, <coughs> That's not going to work. Yeah? You have to believe it like the wagon driver believed it. If you believe it, what they say in Israel is an expression, fix. You ever heard that? Fix in Israel. Like, fix means it's taken care of. You don't have to worry about it. You know, you can let go like this. You can just you know, throw in tension. It doesn't mean you have to do ishtadlut. You have to do ishtadlut. Because the bracha, dafka comes when you do ishtadlut. You have to do something. Yeah? So the bracha, that was last week's after. It has to be chal on something. It has to have somewhere to go. But that's it. So I'm just going to review what we spoke about today. We spoke a lot of important ideas. Number one, we said when you daven, when you pray, pray for rachmanut. Don't pray because you deserve it. That's number one. Number two, we spoke about shalos goy. Every night you go to sleep. Your, your neshama leaves your goof. You can wake up as a non-Jew. You can wake up Michael Jackson or any of these, or Trump or, I don't know, Hillary Clinton, you know, Obama even. You know? So um, we make a bracha that Hashem didn't put the, uh, the neshama of a non-Jew. Is this going to go on the internet? It's going to go on the internet? Okay. <laughs> Be careful, you know, Michael Byron. You know, one time I was in the airport and I was putting on my tefillin and a Korean woman comes up to me and she says, can I ask you, what are you putting on your head? I said to this lady, I said, do you learn the Bible? She said, yes. Did you ever see the word phylacteries? She said, yes. These are phylacteries. She almost fainted. She took a picture, she put it on Facebook, she sent it to all of it. You know? And that's it, you know? That's not, but we're a holy people. We're the Jewish people. Hashem gave us a gift. The Torah is the best gift in the whole world. It's worth like a billion dollars. Can you bring me, there's a bag there, an orange and black bag with my tefillin on the table. You want to bring it to me? I have to show you. I have a check there for $100,000. You ever see a check for $100,000? In that bag, you have a check for $100,000. I want to show it to you. On that table. Or the, we're going the wrong way, bro. Yeah, over there. There's an orange and black bag. There's a check for $100,000. But anyway, is it made out to anybody or not yet? It is made out. But okay, so that's number two. Then we spoke also about uh, uh, stopping. Well, we spoke about Eno Movado. When a person thinks Eno Movado, he lifts himself up to another world. And if they're robbers or witches or whatever, yeah, he'll yeah, be protected. That yeah, that's it. That's my filling bag. <laughs> so it's a computer bag, you know, what can you do? That's what I have. Okay. And then we spoke about um, Parnasa coming from Parshanaman. Okay, so this is my Tefillin. It's Rob Power. I want to show you. Inside my Tefillin case, I have a check for <coughs> here. A check for $100,000. Here it is. Check for $100,000. So you probably want to know, where the check for $100,000? So the truth is, I made it out to myself. And I like this. I said, you know what? If someone gave me a donation of $100,000, I would do a lot of things. Every one of you put on tefillin. You know how much that's worth? It's worth a trillion, zillion, quadrillion dollars, you know? But we don't realize it. If someone come up to us every morning in shul and say, look, here's a check for $100,000. Put on tefillin properly this morning. Say the little tefillah beforehand. When you make the bracha, think about it. Think about, it says, You're supposed to think about that when you put it on. It's an osa yadecha. That means your hand is given over to Hashem. Utotofos beni necha. That your mind is given over to Hashem. If you would get $100,000, even for $5,000, you would do it. Probably for $100, you would do it, right? It's certainly for $100,000.
If you would do that, then you would, we would be different people. But we forget. That's why I take out this check every morning that I plan to fill in. And I look at it, 100000 I'm getting much more. You take it out after Parshat I'm getting up a billion dollars. What? Oh, give it back? Yeah, okay. No, after Parshat you should take it out. Get paid. <laughs> okay. Anyway, whatever it is. But, and that's what we spoke about. And listen, and I said Parshat Aman. Here, I my book, Praying with Joy 4, I speak about it. So that's it. Listen, the main thing we spoke about tonight is what I learned from my teacher, Shalom Brevda, is that Hashem has to not be part of your life. Hashem has to be your life. That's what we say, Hashem Echad. Everything, the whole world is Hashem. And this morning I was saying, Shema, I was thinking, one means there's nothing else. Hu Echad, Bein Shini. There's nothing else. And then you're Dabak to Hashem, and then the Brach will flow into your life like a river, like... Anyone ever been to Niagara Falls? Mm-hmm. See the water flowing? That's how the bracha will flow into your life. Everyone should be Matzliach, mm-hmm. and Parnasa, and Shalom Bayes, mm-hmm. and Chinuch, mm-hmm. and Health, mm-hmm. in all areas. And the Zerat Shem will have the Gulab, Bakarov, Amen, Kenyatsa.